Welcome once again to Living in the 21st Century. Joining me today is my brother and past senior pastor of First Christian Union Church of Boston, Jonas Leithen. Um, my brother, it's good to have you here on the show again. Um, we are going through some strange times in the land. Um, <laughs> a generation who appear to be lost, uh, who needs some godly counsel. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like what we are doing here for the past week, a week of praying and fasting and so forth. Um, Today, just just tell me what what do you think um, the the children today of God has this formation of godliness, but really denying the power of God. I believe it comes from a lack of um, commitment, mm -hmm. a lack of um, how you would call it devotion to the things of God. You know, God calls us to walk with him. Amen. When Jesus called people, he said to them, follow me. And uh, until we are following him, not a religion, not a certain group, not a certain ethnic um, group, but him in person, then we are not going to be doing the right thing. And... Uh, we will always have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That's true. I can remember in, in times growing up as a kid, um, you know, there was a sense that the older folk has such a unique closeness and bond with God. And over the years, this evolutionary process came about where the older you grow, it seems like the more far away you see people straying from God. Um, church becoming meaningless, it becoming a social background for people. Um, it's okay to go to church, um, speak well, look elegantly, but when you go back home after you leave church, the same atmosphere persists that you came in with, there's no change. Um, is church leaders today responsible for this type of atmosphere that is within the church? Well, I don't think the total blame goes to the church leaders, mm -hmm. but I think because people have, have um, become so independent of God, so to speak, mm -hmm that they don't think there is a necessity to be so wrapped up with the God thing, as, it, as I would say it. For example, when I was growing up in the church, you would never find people going out shopping unless it's an extreme emergency. You would never find people go, going shopping on a Sunday. That was dedicated to the Lord. However, today, because we have everything at our disposal, mm -hmm. we feel we don't need God. We don't have to sacrifice anything. We don't have to dedicate ourselves like we the old people used mm -hmm. to. So we go to church for an hour, an hour and a half, and that's enough for us. That's enough of God for us. And the preacher, God forbid, that he should preach more than 10, 20, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and that's it. People begin to get fidgety, people begin to get annoyed, and they want to go home. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so, so in essence then we can actually say that there is, a, there is this chaotic feeling among um, the body of Christ in a very subtle way that if you can't get out of church in time, um, it's just we just it's like just fulfilling an obligation. It's good to go to church. Yes, but that's it. Just, <laughs> it's good, 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 good to go to church. You, you, I, I mean, we we are praying right now for a revival in the land, and 
I think it's imperative that we do have a revival in the land, not just in our church or, or in our community, but the whole nation as a whole needs a revival where we can be taken to a place where we look beyond the natural realm to recognize that we are more than just a physical being, but it's both physical and spiritual. And tap into that spiritual source, who is God Almighty, that can preserve our souls, preserve our integrity as a person, knowing that when we go out of this flesh, when we pass away, that there's still a next life there. It could be eternal life with Christ, or it could be eternal life in hell. It's, is it right now the best time that not only our church, but churches as a whole come to grips with themselves and start revival in the land? This is the time, really. Mm -hmm. if, if we look at it very closely, you will find that when people are in church, they are very sanctimonious. Mm -hmm. As soon as they leave church, they leave that attitude, that spirit of church in the building. Mm -hmm. They don't go home with it. Mm -hmm. Because if they did, there would be a constant hungering and thirsting for God. And that is what will bring revival. A deep hungering and thirsting for God. Here's what I find out, that because people have become so materialistic mm -hmm. that they don't care about spiritual things anymore. Mm -hmm. No, they have enough and to spare. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they don't care about eternity. Mm -hmm. When they're in church, they're reminded of eternity. They're reminded there's a uh, 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 judgment to come. They're, they're reminded that Christ is coming back. But when they leave the building, they don't worry about that anymore. It's as though what the preacher was saying was just for that moment, and that's it. Yeah. Well, in, th in this case, we, we can actually or rightfully state that planet Earth in its beauty and splendor becomes the heaven for modern day generation. Um, it's so beautiful and everything. I mean, all the answers that you can acquire in life or you, you can need in life is right there. If, if you're sick, you run to a physician. Back in the mm -hmm. biblical time, you were sick. The apostles and the prophets and, and God's yeah. chosen ones would lay on hands on you, pray for you. Christ himself would do that. And you, you wasn't just made whole. You had no side effects. So when God say, by your faith you are healed, or you are healed, it means you are complete, you are healed. So you don't have to worry about side effects. Um, today, we are in a world where people want a quick fix. Mm -hmm. um, you got a pain, um, get an oxycodone or uh, a ibuprofen, or even go and get some marijuana stuff and calm that nerve or calm that pain, and mm -hmm. you're good for a short period of time. Quick fix, yes. And, and because of the quick fix of the world, the, des the burning desire that it start, that, um, for that quick fix that wasn't existing back in the ancient times, that's not existing in the present, I mean, there's almost a pill for every answer of your problems. If you have psychological problems, schizophrenic or, or bipolar or autistic, um, there's an answer from every modern day doctor back in the time the men and women of God would have known whether you are a demon possessed, but no call scientifically in a different name. And there's a medication for that to keep you calm for a short time. And mm -hmm. we're actually destroying the human body or destroying the human temple. While it's back in that time, the men and women of God would have taken care of that problem and see a complete deliverance. Do, I mean, do you think this is a time where we as Christians, um, and, and I don't want to use the word Christians to this standpoint, but the so-called, I don't want to use the word so-called men and women of God lose the purpose that they were called to do as sons and daughters of God. People have forgotten their way, mm -hmm. and they have forgotten where they fell from. 
Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. People have rejected God totally, mm -hmm. even in the church. Mm -hmm. You listen to conversations in the church sometimes, and you wonder whether or not these people know God because they doubt the very power of God, the very existence of God sometimes. I remember it is not a new phenomenon mm -hmm. because in the Old Testament, God was leading his people. Yes. They were not satisfied with his leadership. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was too slow. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's how they felt. Mm -hmm. However, in the days of Samuel, mm -hmm. they went to him and said, listen, we want a, a king over us like other nations. That's where it starts. When we reject God and his authority in our lives, in our homes, in our churches, when we reject the authority of God, then we replace him with some um, Baals and Ashtoreths, and then our world is turned upside down. Our communities turn upside down. Listen, all this killing, all this crime and uh, going on in our communities, the church should have enough. In fact, let me not say should. The church has enough power. Yes. To counteract those things because the God who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. However, the church is fragmented and a fragmented church is not going to be effective against the works of Satan. Satan work in concert with his demons. Mm -hmm. If we are going to see success, we have to work in concert with our God. We have to let him run let right. the business, let him have authority in, in our business. When he becomes king of our lives, mm -hmm. king of all, then he can do what he wants and it's going to be effective. The world, whole world, listen, I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned this time and time again. I have seen the power of God Amen. at work in people's lives. Many years ago in a village that I pastored in, God came in a mighty way because the people there, the church there, it was small, very few members, but they had a mind for God. They wanted God. They were hungry for God and God came and used them and changed the whole village. By the time I was pulled out of that village, there was a third Christian church being established in that village. Our churches were small churches, but another church was coming in to be established because God came in and there was like a revolution. People who never, you would have never thought would come to God. They came to the Lord. They were changed. All kind of demons were rebuked and, and driven away yes. from the lives and homes of people. Listen, it can happen again. God is still God. No Amen. matter what happened, he's still God. Amen. One of the things I, I would love to talk about is to step out the natural for a, a second. Okay. You know, there, we often pray and ask God for the spirit of discernment. And when you are blessed with that spirit, it comes, it comes with a, a heavy burden. Mm -hmm. And it comes with the burden that you, it's not about sensing what's going on around you. It's actually feeling what's going on with, with around yes. you. And you can tell the, the burdens in, in the hell that your brothers and sisters are going through, not only in terms in the church or family members, but the people around you, you can actually tell feel the sin that is breaking them down, their yokes, their burdens mm -hmm. that is breaking mm -hmm. them down. Mm -hmm. And 
the, the, the worst thing about that is that there was a time in my life when I used to go to hospitals and minister to the sick and those that dying, when they are in a realm that even though they are there with you physically, it means absolutely nothing to them. It's, they don't even want a drink of water. They're so, they are so much in is a different world, a spirit world. They already knew that they're departing this earth. And some of them are wrestling with the thought, where will my soul be? Mm -hmm. And when you're young and strong and vibrant and, and walking and you're full of energy and bursting, no one seems to care about that part of their life, that spiritual part. And it's painful that when you see that person is subtracted from that youthfulness, and that's why it is essential to remember they creating the days of the youth, that when they're subtracted from that youthfulness and no step into the realm of death, it's a painful thing. Mm -hmm. And I, there were moments where there's some who give their lives to God and there, was, there were some who just didn't want to hear about God and that burden, you know where that person is going. And I think as a person, a man of God, when you are in that hemisphere, whether it's in, around your church, whether it's in your household, and you want to witness to someone, but they are so much caught up in their world, your witnessing means nothing. And you can literally see that phase of dying. They, 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 they appear bursting with energy, but they are dying spiritually. And more and more they prolong in this phase, they are going into a realm to a point where there would not be no return unless they're reached by the hands of mighty God and pulling them back. And I think that's a serious place to be in. And the world we live in now, which is so distractful, is that ministering the word of God becomes just something. Uh, people hear it because it sounds good. But I think the men of God today in this 21st century must understand the relevancy of God's Holy Spirit. He same God yesterday, today, now and forever. The same miracles he performed today, yesterday can do today. And we got to prepare our bodies to the point where we can spiritually connect to God in unity to demonstrate that power and authority. The revival has to come through us as individuals. But even though it's, I mean, one man can change the world with, with God absolute righteousness. And I think we come to a point in our lives where we have to take that proactive approach one-on-one. -on -one. I say, Lord, if no one is doing it, I'm going to do it. We got to start revival, start in our church, invite communities, invite members from other churches, because people need to come into a place where the presence of God is so strong, that his anointing is so strong that the darkness that had people holding down and restrained for so many years, they have to be loose from that burden. That yoke has to be broken. And past, I think, now we are going through this phase of um, praying and fasting. It's a time where we have to go to a, a, a new dimension totally, straight into revival, straight into revival, and declare the word of God, I mean, with, with supernatural power. Things can change, but God just want that one person, those couple of people to come to the point and acknowledge what needs to be done and take that dynamic approach in doing it. And I bless God, Pastor, for you um, calling on this, this 10 day praying and fasting. Um, it, for me, it's a great experience. Uh, I haven't prayed and fasted for a while, but it is a great experience in getting more fertile in the Holy Spirit. And it, you, you start to burst with visions and see things that 
you haven't given thought to for a long, long time. But, you know, I, I, I would like you to comment on this prayer and fasting and where we're going to take it from here. Well, the way I look at it is because reading the word of God, it shows me that our present day church as it is, have lost its way. And uh, to get back to where God wants us to be, then there needs to be some sacrifice, sacrificial attitude adopted. And by this, I mean that we need to stop what we've been doing and do some of the things that we don't like at all. Yes. We don't like to, to stop eating and uh, food becomes a distraction, so to yes. speak. And so we need to turn that plate and that cup and that glass, turn it over yes. and stay without food for a while yes. while we are pleading before the Lord. In other words, we are trying to show God. He knows our hearts, but mm -hmm. we're trying to show him in our, yes. hum with our humanity yes. that we mean what we are saying because we would like to begin to do what he wants us to do that, what he expects us yes. to be doing. Amen. Revelation, Revelation tells us to remember where we made our mistake. Remember where thou art fallen yes. and repent. Yes. The church today needs to repent. Yes. There are no deeps or buts about it. It needs to repent because we have lost our way. So what we are doing at our small church, two small churches this week, is that we are trying to get back on track. Amen. It's nothing new, but the Bible tells us, call the people to a time of prayer and fasting. Put on our sackcloth and ashes, so to speak, so that we can begin to do the things that God wants us to do. I'm looking for miracles. Amen. I'm looking for the extraordinary mm -hmm. right now. I'm tired with the ordinary. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the extraordinary. And I know that my God, whom I serve, is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we may ask or think. Earlier on, you spoke about um, the way people behave. Until people recognize their need for God, mm -hmm. then they are not going to change. Mm -hmm. Until sinners recognize how much they need God. I'll give you mm -hmm. two examples. And they both are very personal examples. Mm -hmm. My dad and my granddad. My granddad did not want to have anything at all to do with Christianity. Nothing at all, no matter who spoke to him about God, he, he got upset and he didn't want to hear them. I remember when he died, my mom was in the room and my mom said she never want to have an experience like this again in her life because that man was tormented yes. dying. The other one is my dad. Mm -hmm. I got the conviction in my spirit that my dad, somebody needs to talk to him about God. Mm -hmm. The Lord says to me, you talk to him. And I did. My dad responded to the gospel, gave his heart to the Lord. On his dying bed, his last words were, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And he fell asleep. Yes. Didn't wake up. He saw his need. He accepted Christ as his savior. At one point on his bed, he said he saw the angel coming. My God, I, I could have just jumped out of my skin because I know my, my dad was right with God. So when people want God, 
when people have a desire for God, the, the word of God said, if you seek me, you shall find me. Mm -hmm. God is not hiding. He's there. But we people have to want him. Amen. Well, that's what we, we are running up on this first half of the show. And when we return, I want to let us look at the portion of scriptures that state, um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh, they shall be filled. Yes. And that portion that state, man shall not live by bread alone, bread alone. but by yes. every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. Uh, that, those portions we want to look at, um, we want to look at in depth, because I think one of the things that modern Christians are faced with is not knowing the attitude of how to prepare them bodies, a living mm -hmm. sacrifice, holy and acceptable. And we want to look at the principle of doing that. Um, I think we have to prepare our bodies and soul and spirit in a way that we can invoke the Holy Spirit to come within mm -hmm. and strengthen us. So we'll be back right after this in the next half of the show, and we're going to talk about that. Amen. Well, thank you all for just tuning in on Living in the 21st Century. And we'll be right back with the second half of this show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.